my story is the story of an inner city neighborhood that sort of adopted and helped to groom a young man who was interested in the arts and interested in um, making a contribution with my life and my life's work to others who were not as, as advantaged. So it was really a community that was economically disadvantaged. And I became one of the people that helped to create a solution to a lot of the problems that people in that neighborhood were facing. And I'm still doing it for a living. Way, way back when I was in high school, I got excited about ceramics and Carnegie Tech had a big ceramics program. And I used to uh, get a Port Authority bus to go out after our high school closed. CMU Carnegie Tech had a big ceramics program run by a guy named Wesley Mills, who was an iconic figure <clears throat> in contemporary ceramics and re helped to revitalize ceramics in the region. And he really liked me. And so I would sneak in to the pottery shop out at Carnegie Mellon. And after a while, he got aware of the fact I was doing that. So he put a wedge in the door so I could get in. And so I owe a lot of my early education and opportunity in clay back to Carnegie Tech. Manchester started the community of Manchester, and um, it was during the riots. And I wanted to do something to help the students in the neighborhood. And I knew something about clay, so I started a program called Manchester Craftsman Skill. And the idea was to take the apprentice concept and apply it to kids so that they would become, in effect, apprentices at the arts program. And that hence, Manchester Craftsman's Guild. It was based on the English Craft Guild model. And uh, so I viewed all these students as really apprentices. And um, I started hearing back in the school that kids were starting to show up more regularly. And after a while, I figured it out. There wasn't anything wrong with the kids. Uh, the school system was the problem, not the kids. The people who ran Bidwell, it was then called the Bidwell Cultural and Training Center, were looking for somebody to kind of take over the program. And that turned out to be me. And so I rebuilt Bidwell. It was a very, very, it was struggling. And the programs were kind of dysfunctional and they owed money to the Internal Revenue Service. It was, it was in pretty bad shape. But um, they had heard about my work at Manchester and offered me the job at Bidwell. So I took it over and um, in 1972, during some very troubled times, there were massive demonstrations for racial justice. And the city, quite literally, was on fire. And there were a lot of protests, particularly around labor unions, that wouldn't take in black people. So there were massive demonstrations during that period of time. It was, the city was in trouble. Well, Tasso Gonzalez, um, whose work I knew because he de designed the chapel at St. Vincent's Monastery. I just was the commencement speaker there Saturday. And um, I found out later that Tasso had studied with Frank Lloyd Wright. So I ended up at Falling Water. And I was so taken with Falling Water, I said, I really want to take some of the principles in that house and basically build a school based on the principles of that house. And the, the whole facility is light, it's very bright, and has very, a very close proximity to nature. And I thought, I've got to build a facility that is bright and hopeful so that people who come here, whose spirit oftentimes is in the dark, 
will come to a facility that's lit and encouraging with great food and great music. And down the street, we have a hort program. So flowers has now become part of our culture as well. So it was all of those things that really inspired me to build this facility. Because I really believe that kids, everybody, needs to have beautiful art in their lives all the time. So the best way to do it is to build a space where they see art. It has a big influence on behavior. You put people in beautiful spaces, they become beautiful people. You put them in prisons, they become prisoners. Good food, sunlight, music, those are all the ingredients that you need to have present in order to get people to reimagine themselves in places and areas that their minds had never contemplated. You do that by exposure. It's all exposure. You can't imagine it if you can't see it. So what you have to do is create a picture in their heads so they can see something. You know, guys walk in here, their eyes are open, but they ain't seen anything. Because they're not, they don't know what they're looking at. But with education, they begin to slowly get it. That um, the music and the art and the food, um, the orchids and so forth, um, they get the idea that this is a very special place. That's the whole point. And that uh, can be scaled anywhere. I don't care what country it is. It's, I believe it's universal. The TED people heard about me because I have a speaker's bureau and um, called the Lavin Agency and they were connected somehow to TED. And David said to the TED people, you ought to uh, bring this guy, Bill Strickland, to do a TED talk. As it turns out, Herbie Hancock, who had played here, um, became a good friend. And he was at TED, the TED conference when I was there. And Herbie said, well, why don't we go out and you talk and I'll play. Literally, no rehearsal. And he went out and played the piano, and I did a little slide presentation on my center, and it was got a huge ovation from the audience. And that, that is quite literally where it started. I've learned from experience, keep talking. Just keep telling the story over and over and over again. And, you know, once upon a time I had a, one center, now I got 15. Right? Well, where'd they come from? They came from talking. And so I'm going to keep talking. I'll talk to anybody that's willing to listen and do something about what they heard. So it, it, there, this is not free. Uh, there is a price. The price is you have to do something with what if you think I'm inspirational, then do something about it. And don't tell me you can't, because there's got to be a homeless shelter close to where you live. Right? Help out at the homeless shelter. Help out with indigent kids. I mean, there's centers that are devoted in their lives to getting people off of drugs. Volunteer, man. I don't cost you nothing. In fact, you may gain more than you give. And I believe... Everybody in the, if we started doing that in the world, we could move this needle. I'm more careful about listening because everybody's got a story. Everybody. And I've gotten very interested in hearing those stories. I mean, you know, you're born, everybody's born the same. You're born. And from there you build your story. 
and everybody's got a journey, man, and I'm very interested in these journeys, how people got to be what they are.